I didn't bring any energy drinks with me today. Sometimes I have those things, but I'm a, I'm a huge caffeine fan. What about you, dude? Absolutely. I'm one of those weirdos that I don't drink caf- uh, coffee, rather. I don't drink coffee at all, but that certainly does not mean I'm not consuming caffeine on a daily basis. I was, uh, I, I've, I've said this on the show before and I say it all the time, kind of when I'm out, but if I'm out on the range or whatever, people living on, you know, energy drinks and granola bars or, or shit like that or whatever <laughs> yeah. they got at the Starbucks, you know, yeah. the Starbucks wraps or, or whatever. Yeah, or whatever, egg bite thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that cake pops. <laughs> Cake pops and energy drinks for two days. Um, the reality of it is like if I'm on a if I'm on a road trip on one of those things, I'm always I'm always killing a couple of sugar free monsters while I'm gone. I love those things. They taste delicious. Yeah. It's it's part of the ritual, just like your cup of coffee is part of the ritual. Yeah. And, you know, do I always need the caffeine? No. But I get some satisfaction out of just the taste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just it's, it. it's like uh, I think we you said it off the air just a second ago. To me, it's kinda like a soft drink. And uh I don't like I don't drink a lot of stuff other than water and beer because that's one of the other. That's like the sixth food group in case you didn't know. But <laughs> yeah. uh, Bread. <laughs> exactly. I guess it fits in that category at some level. But uh, it too is delicious and that's why I enjoy it. But um, yeah, I wanted to talk about energy drinks today. It's come up a few times. I had a guy I was talking to the other day. He's actually a really well-known instructor who I really love. And he's like, man, I got to stop drinking these things. I'm like, how come? He's like, dude, I have like two a day. And I'm like, well, what else are you drinking? You know, and he's like, you, you know, kind of went through the list. I'm like, I don't know, man. Why are you beating yourself up like that? He goes, I just, they're bad. Right. And I was like, oh, we should talk about this because what is the bad in the energy drink? Now we've talked about them before in a way where I think you've got to be responsible. You know, when you're consuming anything, you're putting anything in your body, you need to be responsible. But I think this is a weird, people have kind of become fearful of them. And there's some social things that I think have come up with this with regard to like, why it, they basically kind of put like the energy energy drinks bad energy drinks evil label on things and i'm not i'm not necessarily on board with that again i think you should be responsible just like with your food don't eat or drink like an asshole but at the same time like are they all together bad so <clears throat> I'll, hopefully we can crush that a little bit today maybe even give some people some direction on like cool if you're going to drink energy drinks how should you consume them because i think there's a way to do that yeah i think you hit the nail on the head when it comes to for whatever reason, energy drinks seem to have been lumped into like the junk food category yep. and that anyone who is, you know, if you're a, if you're a responsible adult and you're cracking open an energy drink, everyone looks at you like, what are you in college or something? Like, what do you have an all nighter? Like, why, why are you having that? And do I ever ask you why you drink coffee every single day? <laughs> that's uh, no, nobody asks anybody. That's not weird. No. In fact, it's like, it's, it's more than acceptable. It's it's like if you're not carrying around the right craft coffee cup from the from mm-hmm. the local coffee shop that where all the cool kids go, you're looked you're frowned upon. Yeah, it's like that's like an accessory. And but then, yeah, somebody will ask <laughs> right. me, oh yeah, let's go have a cup of coffee, and I'm like, I don't drink coffee. They're like, why well, are you some kind of fuck is your problem? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I mean, you it's like yeah, people look down their noses at it. I think even like the older folks are looking at because they don't really understand that like energy drinks. I'm an older mm-hmm. folk, but uh, <laughs> I don't. Like it, it, energy drinks were not a thing when I was a kid, right? Mm, like, so yeah, it, it's that it's relatively new or I, jolt, I don't think it is anymore, but I guess like it that. is. Yeah. But yeah, I guess when we look back at like the history of things, like there was that thing called, yeah. jol- are you old enough to even remember that? I, mean, I know of it from a pop culture standpoint. Kind what, of the, a, what the hell was that stuff? It was like double the caffeine. Yeah. I think it was just like a highly caffeinated cola, something yeah, like that. I don't, yeah, I don't know what it was exactly in terms of the... Uh, milligrams per can, but yeah, I think yeah, that, that, I think that that seems like in the U.S. at least that that was like the first like energy drink. I think you're right about that. Actually, that's interesting history. We should go back and look at that. But I do remember that like you weren't you they weren't allowed to sell the shit at school. Soda was fine, but <laughs> of could course, not, could not do jolt colas, and it was the root of all evil there for a while. Wow, it's interesting. Yeah, so I, I um, but. Uh, Forever or for a long time, for as long as I can remember, caffeine has been known as a performance enhancer. It also can enhance cognitive or cognition. Uh, the, the jury is not out on that anymore. Like we, it has been proven like caffeine is, is a performance enhancer. An enhancer. It doesn't make you perform, but it can enhance your ability. Yeah, yeah. And at, at, at the same time, while the majority of American adults are consuming caffeine almost every single day, there's almost like a, a guilt 
about it. Like, uh, I, I need my coffee. I just, I just need it. I shouldn't need it, but I do. Um, which there may be something to that, but I think there is a, it's like a, a vice caffeine is seen, at least I have run into a lot of people who view their caffeine consumption as a vice that they just don't want to let go of, but they feel like it's somehow negative or it's bad for them. Yeah. I think there could be some argument in looking at it. Like it is like one of nature's drugs, so to speak, because it does, it does impact the physiology in a, in a, in a human physiology in a certain way. Could call it psychoactive to some degree. To some degree. So I I get where people kind of go with that. And I think there are people, obviously, that are very sensitive to certain amounts of caffeine while others are not. And can you be conditioned to, or be desensitized, maybe is more of the term, to certain levels of caffeine? The answer to that is yes, we know Mm -hmm. that to be true. And if you don't believe that, if you don't believe you're one of those people, just stop drinking caffeine for a week (laughs) and then go back to the same amount you were running before. After you experience (laughs) withdrawals. Which, depending on how much caffeine you've been consuming and for how long. So I think obviously there is a, um, there, that could, that could drive a negative connotation. Like, well, mm-hmm. if that's happening, there's dependence has, forming. It has yeah. to be bad. Yeah. Uh, maybe. I mean, I think it depends on, and on your caffeine consumption, who you are as an individual, your goals and, you know, kind of what those habits look like for you. I don't want to get into that. I certainly don't want to get into this moral implication of, you know, mm-hmm. if you drink an energy, energy drink, you're somehow less of a human yeah. or you're, you're less intelligent or, or whatever else. Let's be honest. I mean, here's, here's, here's some facts. Um, and this goes back to, and this, this, this goes back to a very, really cool uh, article that you wrote for us not too long ago. It was actually just came out a few weeks ago from the time we were recording this about energy drinks, but you, you brought up some stats. So I want to remind you of some of these stats right here. And so going back to like, it, while there may be some, while people may be looking down their noses at others, uh, there's a massive market here. And yeah. apparently a lot of people are drinking uh, energy drinks. And I would bet those people, some of those people that are looking down their noses are also doing this yeah. in one way or another, not, not knowing just because it doesn't say Red Bull or Monster on the can doesn't mm-hmm. mean you're not drinking some type of energy, drink, some yeah. type of quote unquote energy drink as mm-hmm. the kind of the industry defines it. So mm-hmm. um, we're looking at um, U.S. sales in, uh, in uh, 2023 topped $18 billion in this market. Cans of energy drinks. Cans of energy drinks. All right. So whatever, three bucks a pop. Think about how accessible they are. I mean, they are everywhere from the grocery store to the gas station to, you know, the airport vending machine. They are, they are everywhere. Any convenience store, any liquor store, 7-Eleven, all of them. It's expected or the projected um, expectation in terms of increase over the next five years to 2027, $240 billion, man. Worldwide. Worldwide. That is wild. Yeah. So when you think about you think about that, like they're not going anywhere and everybody's in the game right now or trying to get mm-hmm. in the game. So all the major distributors already have entered this somehow, or all major manufacturers, Coke, mm-hmm. Pepsi. Oh yeah. Um, Nestle's in it. I mean, there's so many companies in this. They're everywhere. I mean, it just I mean, people know kind of the bigger brand names. Mm-hmm. I think Red Bull was the first one to really nail the marketing on it, right? Yeah, I think that was I feel like the the uh, category defining brands, at least in the U S are red and Red Bull is around the world. Um, red Bull and monster. Those seem to be the brands that when everybody thinks of energy drinks, they think of, Oh, like Red Bulls or something, right. Or those monster things or Rockstar is another big one. That was a big one. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's still, I mean, those, they still exist too. I mean, you go into any, any store now and you look at like the refrigeration section where you go in and obviously there's all the drinks, man, two thirds of that thing are full uh, maybe that's an exaggeration. Close to half when you go into a lot of these bigger places like the the larger convenience store, gas station type market things, yeah. whatever that industry, yeah, whatever that, however that that industry defines those things, to, uh, at least half of the refrigerators are full of these different brands, and they are carrying the ones that they know sell. Exactly, they're there for a reason. <clears throat> they are there. They're for, not there because they're gathering dust. They are there for a reason. So people are finding some value in them. So let's mm-hmm. talk about what value there is. I mean, we've alluded to a couple of things, but what mm-hmm. value is there in caffeine intake before we get into the quote unquote dangers of drinking energy drinks? Yeah. Well, like you already stated, it's pretty much ironclad as close to ironclad proven um, that caffeine is an ergogenic aid. Caffeine improves cognitive performance. It improves physical performance. It can, Im- it can actually stimulate your metabolism and increase caloric expenditure. So there could be some potential weight loss benefits to regular caffeine consumption. So caffeine is, you know, when consumed responsibly, 
I see caffeine as almost nothing but a positive. There's actually really few adverse side effects if you have a normal tolerance to it and if you have some idea of what an appropriate caffeine intake is. So let's talk about some of those numbers, right? So what is considered a uh, safe number or safe level with regard to caffeine consumption on a daily basis as defined by what? What are we talking about? The USDA? Yeah, I believe it's uh, the, I believe it's the FDA, maybe the USDA, one of those governing bodies, as well as the uh, European Food Safety Authority. So they're pretty, they're pretty tight. Yeah. So if you trust everything in Europe more than our regulations here in the US, which you probably should, um, both, uh, both governmental agencies set the mark at 400 milligrams is considered the upper limit of a safe daily intake. So if you are consuming 400 milligrams or less, that is considered a safe intake. Well within the, well within okay. Yes. All right. So let's, let's paint a picture here. So we're looking at like a cup of coffee, right? Versus like an espresso versus like a Red Bull or whatever else we're looking at. How much caffeine am I getting in a, say, regular cup of drip coffee? 80 milligrams, maybe 80 to 100 milligrams, somewhere in there. Green tea might be 40 milligrams. Matcha might be 70 milligrams. A diet Coke is like 45 yeah, milligrams. So low. we're not even talking 100 milligrams. We're not even talking a quarter of what is considered the upper limit of a safe daily intake. Yeah. So you, you could drink five regular cups of coffee and still be under or within mm-hmm. the safe range. So exactly. And most people would consider that excessive coffee consumption or caffeine consumption. Yeah. How much caffeine like in a shot of espresso? I mean, obviously this is going to, it, it, I get it. It depends, but is there a range here? Um, I believe espresso, maybe like a hundred to 150 somewhere okay. in that range. Again, I'm not, you know, I'm the energy drink guy. I'm not the coffee guy. So if but, you get, uh, so if you got a yeah. triple shot, right. Mm-hmm. If you got a triple shot, you mm-hmm. know, latte or whatever it is, you're still within, yeah. you know, if exactly. you're doing, if you're doing that two, three times a day, um, now we might be mm-hmm. talking uh, excess consumption, but but yeah, and when it comes to energy drinks, 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams is a pretty standard energy drink. So I think the connotation is that okay? Well, yeah, my my coffee is okay, and yeah, I'm not going to drink five cups of coffee, but that that energy drink, that's a caffeine bomb. That's going to be just an excessive amount of caffeine in one serving. When that's really not the case. Yeah, there's some things to talk about there with regard to like caffeine consumption and what you're onboarding with your caffeine through coffee versus what Mm -hmm. you're on and the different types of coffee and all the things that exist out there versus maybe what you're getting through like an energy drink. But maybe just real quick on a tangent here, does the sourcing of the caffeine matter like with regard to potency? Can we talk about Mm -hmm. that a little bit? Maybe not potency, but maybe the, um, the additional potential benefits. So, I mean, your, your naturally derived caffeine from like a coffee bean or something like that, um, versus the synthetic caffeine that's usually in like pre-workouts or some energy drinks, the caffeine, uh, anhydrous or anhedrous. So, I mean, when it comes to, if I'm drinking naturally sourced caffeine, there may be some additional antioxidants that's in a coffee gotcha. or something like that. Additional polyphenols. Actually, somebody told me just the other day, one of my clients who's a, um, a, a naturopathic doctor that coffee is the number one source of polyphenols. The number one source of polyphenols uh, for Con- American consumption. Yeah, for American well, consumption. Well, that makes sense. We drink least. a lot of coffee yeah. here. We're not eating fruits and vegetables, but we're drinking plenty <laughs> of coffee. Um, so yeah, that you could, you know, there could be a, a difference between the naturally sourced caffeine versus the synthetic caffeine. But in terms of potency, that's not something that I have, you know, that's not something I'm familiar with. Okay. So aside from the obvious that people would get maybe like the jitters and things like that, like mm-hmm. what's the downside, what's the negative side effects of onboarding above quote unquote safe levels of that, that 400 milligrams a day? What, what should people expect if they haven't already experienced this, or maybe they have, and they're just not maybe paying attention to what it yeah. is that they may be experiencing? What, yeah. are, what are the downsides? Yeah. The, the jitters, the anxiety, potentially rapid heart rate difficulty sleeping. I think acutely, it's just very uncomfortable. But if you are chronically over-consuming caffeine, that can create a bit of a vicious cycle in terms of now our sleep is disrupted. Now we may be looking at chronically elevated cortisol. We may be, you know, kind of running our adrenal system into the ground because we're not only, not only is cortisol being released, but adrenaline, noradrenaline, some of the other adrenal hormones. So I think that 
that is more of a, of a chronic issue versus, okay, if I sort of have too much caffeine one day, yeah, I might feel a little shaky, a little mm. antsy. Um, you know, if someone is especially, uh, sensitive to caffeine, you know, it could go full blown, like panic attack. If you start, you know, if your mind starts going, like my heart's beating fast and then your brain starts beating fast. Right. So, um, but yeah, that, that's something that passes. Caffeine passes through your system. Those symptoms subside. But if you're chronically over consuming caffeine, now we may have some issues. So there's another part to this too. And that is like, you, you mentioned, uh, like chronically, or you you've surpassed the effect effective mm -hmm. timing maybe of how this stuff impacts you. So yeah. caffeine does have a half-life in the system and that, mm -hmm. that may be different for some people over others going back to sensitivity levels or yeah. some level of conditioning that you might yeah, have there, to yeah, it. There can be some considerations there. Yeah. Some considerations, but on average, what are we talking about here in terms of how long that caffeine has impacts in your system and how does that work? So the, the half-life is <laughs> six hours, which in layman's terms basically means it takes six hours for 50% of the caffeine to leave your system. So we can do some math there. It takes, you know, again, there are some different considerations, but approximately 12 hours for, for caffeine to completely leave your system entirely. So, and the impacts of that, and we already kind of mentioned, like if you're having a, uh, if you're having a Red Bull at, you know, three or four in the afternoon and you're trying to get in bed by nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. you could still be fairly elevated. You, mm -hmm. you could still have fairly elevated caffeine levels mm -hmm. and the impacts of that obviously uh, could be residual if, depending on who you are and again, sensitivities and the things that you may or may not be dealing with already. Yeah. I think that the big thing to keep in mind that is still a misconception to this day is that caffeine is it somehow like creates energy. Like I consume mm. caffeine and energy comes to me. Um, caffeine is not creating energy. It is blocking your tired signals. So over the course of the day, we have something called adenosine that builds up in our brain. That is a, a natural process that signals us that we are tired. Adenosine levels are lower in the morning and they increase throughout the day. Caffeine, how we, you know, whatever, cavemen, um, and women figured out, um, you know, that, well played, that, that, that this stuff, uh, you know, uh, this, Hey, this is kind of perks me up is caffeine blocks those adenosine receptors, or it takes up those adenosine receptors and prevents adenosine from building up. So you're essentially tricking your brain and your body into thinking you're not tired. And that increase, you know, that, you know, results in an increase in, you know, potentially in motivation, in alertness, but you are not actually, you don't have more energy. You're just fooling yourself into not being tired, not being tired. Right. Yeah. Which obviously can be very problematic, uh, mm -hmm. depending on who you are and what yeah. you may be, may, may be you, challenged you, by. You keep hitting that button over and over again. Yeah. You're, <laughs> you're headed for a crash. Yeah. So again, going back to like performance benefits, when we can talk about like what happens in the gym, if you're more alert, you know, you're, you, you have a little bit more pep in your step. It's not that you've given yourself more caloric energy to do that, but you mm -hmm. have, again, this, this alertness. We, we know that the, the studies have been done mm -hmm. hands down performance enhancer, like yep. the most study ergogenic aid next to creatine in the entire history of the planet. So yeah, yeah it, it, it quote unquote works mm -hmm. right in that, in that sense. I look at this, I look at this for people that, um, you know, outside of the performance in the gym benefit or on the field or the mat or whatever else, and kind of what's going on in life and when they're reaching for these things. Um, I used to call it like in the middle of the day, like recaffeinating, like yeah. I would recaffeinate, right? Yeah. Like I, cause I'll start every day. There's some caffeine I got coming. too much blood in my caffeine system. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's uh, every day I'm starting with caffeine is it's, it's always coffee. Like mm -hmm. uh, every day, if I'm at home, it's just straight black, unadulterated you water crack, and coffee beans. Crack open that Folgers and you do a double, a double one of hand, those, a yeah. double hand sniff. Of one of those. And everybody's got their own way of how they make their coffee or whatever. I certainly have mine and my preferences. I'm yeah. not a snob, but you know, I like what I like. Yeah. So th th that's what I do later in the day, sometimes around midday or which is midday for me being around noon, um, I will reach for another, maybe some more caffeine before maybe we sit down for a podcast uh, or before I'm going into a meeting or even a workout. And, mm -hmm. but what I'm reaching for then is not generally something that has as high 
a level of caffeine as some of these energy drinks. It's mm. more like 90 to 100 milligrams versus the 200 milligrams. Mm. Um, that's kind of how I manage my day. Sometimes, not every day, but that's, that's, that's sometimes what I do. Uh, I would never go out and do like another double or triple espresso at noon or one o'clock in the afternoon because I know like how I'm feeling at seven, eight o'clock still from that caffeine. It, it, it has residual effects. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I see, I see folks like, again, going back to my, the training that I'm doing and where I'm seeing people, mm. shift workers I see, particularly like in first, the first responder world, mm. this is a thing and there's a stigma around it, but it's also a well-accepted practice that this is just what we do on shift all the time, which is drink these things. Now, yeah. But their shifts are often weird. Like if you start work at two or three in the afternoon, you're working the swing and you're going till like whatever it is, one in the morning, you know, yeah. two in the morning. Like if you're still drinking this stuff at, you know, you're still onboarding, let's say onboarding caffeine, whether it's an energy drink, drink or coffee or whatever, at nine or 10 o'clock at night and you're in your routine is to try and go home and go to sleep, right? Which is not normal at yeah. three o'clock in the morning, yeah. you know, whenever you do get home and you're, you're carrying that caffeine with you going forward, that obviously could be problematic in terms of an already disrupted sleep cycle yeah. and circadian rhythm. Yeah. Your rhythms are already dysregulated because of your job, which is going to make it challenging anyways. I mean, my personal experience was, um, you know, I used to be a bartender. Working in the bars, yeah, same, yeah, man. I used yeah. to be a bartender and yeah, I was consuming caffeine and whatever else I was consuming at, you know, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night to kind of keep my energy up to, you know, to, to keep up with the crowd. Yes, right. And then, you know, it's three o'clock, it's four o'clock, it's time for me to go home. And I still, you know, I would still be up. You're wired. Yeah, I would yeah. still be up. And then I eventually get to sleep, but then I, you know, then I can't sleep past nine in the morning. So yeah, that, you know, it, uh, you're already dysregulated because you are working at odd hours and then the caffeine can be an additional monkey wrench. So you're, you're trying to block the tired because your schedule's weird to begin with, but then you're only perpetuating a vicious cycle. So it's, but it's a tough, I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I've, I've been there and the difference as well, I, I otherwise I don't feel alert when like, what if I need to save somebody's life? Right, I get it. Uh, again, you, you mean, you said it. I get it. It's just, well, well I think we'll come, we can come back with some strategies on how to manage this a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit differently moving forward or before the end. But I think that's a, that's a thing like that people should understand. Like it doesn't impact everybody to the same. There are con some considerations there, but the timing of when you're putting your caffeine in into your system can have some impacts. Some people would say, you know, don't do the caffeine first thing in the morning. Let the natural cortisol response happen before you mm -hmm. start putting that caffeine in. Again, individual, um, uh, to say that drinking coffee first thing in the morning is going to destroy your circadian rhythm and, you know, yeah. uh, you know, your cortisol production and all the things that are supposed to be happening there. Let's not take this too far. Yeah. I actually uh, saw something just recently that, that I, it was posted by, yeah, some uh, health influencer I follow that some type of study or research came out debunking that, that whole like, oh, you need to wait 90 minutes because your, your natural cortisol when you wake up should take you or carry you at least that far. Um, yeah, I've, I've, uh, I just recently saw something that was like, yeah, you can have your ca your coffee within half an hour yeah. of waking up. It's not going to screw you over. Somebody else will produce an article that'll say exactly the opposite. Yeah. And, and again, not everybody's physiology, but no human's physiology is exactly the same. So it could inf impact people differently, but there could be a cause and effect of these things. And mm -hmm. it's not something I, I think for a lot of people, it's splitting hairs, but obviously if you're having trouble, you know, mm -hmm. with a hormonal balance or let's say dysregulation, like these are things that you might apply to see if you can get some benefit from, you yeah. know, again, delaying your caffeine intake, reducing the amount of caffeine you're putting mm -hmm. in. If you are working with, you know, again, an imbalance there somewhere, yeah. I don't want to get too far into those weeds. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one, one thought is, yeah, if you, if you are absolutely dependent, if you're non-functional when you wake up in the morning, unless you have some caffeine, that's probably something to think about. Right. Like, you know, I drink caffeine you know, within the first hour of waking, not because I necessarily need it to function, but because it helps, it enhances my function in my opinion. Right. Um, so, it, but if I had to do without it, I could, maybe I wouldn't be as peppy. Maybe I wouldn't be as energetic, but if you need some coffee to like get your ass out of the house, then that's probably an issue. Yeah. First thing in the morning. <laughs> things, things to think about. Uh, and again, maybe there's some strategies we can bring in here at the end, but again, some would say, well, you just got to tough it out and get through that, uh, you know, get through that, you know, 
uh, withdrawal period if, if you've stopped doing it and work things out. I don't disagree, mm-hmm. but sometimes you, you take the band aid or the life jacket to help you through the the pieces. So again, yeah. without getting too far into the weeds, that's a very individual thing, and mm-hmm. I'm not going to try to give anybody any protocols on that. But yeah. um, uh, uh, another thing that comes up when we talk about energy drinks, we talk about so like half half life. What does caffeine do when it's in the system? Mm-hmm. You know, how does it work? What are the benefits? Um, some of the, 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 I think the concern that comes along with the energy, I know it is, that comes along with the energy drinks is this, this <clears throat> discussion around sugar consumption and or any of the onboarding of not so great other things that come with it. Let's talk mm-hmm. about that. Yeah. Like we said earlier, the kind of energy drink brand, Titans, Red Bull, Monster, they're so synonymous with the energy drink category and they're you know, classic, original, whatever you want right. to call it, uh, the, the, you know, the, the model A of Red Bull and Monster both have significant amounts of, of sugar in them. I think Red Bull is, it's like 26 uh, grams in that little 8.4 ounce can and a 16 ounce can of classic Monster, the black can with the green M is 54 grams of sugar. So, that is a significant amount of sugar. You, you mentioned it being like a soft drink. Um, that is in the monster, at least that's, that's more sugar than you're going to get in a can of Coke. Um, and you know, I don't, I can't do the math off the top of my head, but maybe ounce per ounce is yeah, just as much or more than soda, which I think is why energy drinks get lumped in. Oh, that's just another high sugar junk food, uh, soft drink. Yeah. I think the, the argument about the sugar part is easily thrown out the door when you look at all the sugar-free, the sugar-free options, options that, are, that readily, are out there. Readily available. In fact, I'm seeing more and more and more and more of those anyway. And that, I mean, it makes perfect sense because people are conscious about that, uh, very conscious about that, hyper-conscious, so, so conscious they become neurotic about it in, a, in an unhealthy way as if sugar is going to kill everybody on the planet. Yeah, we uh, always overcorrect. Always, yeah. yeah. It seems to like this natural human instinct now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the the... The onboarding of sugar with regard to the sugar free free stuff, like you can you you can get any of these drinks. There's ten or more options now of the sugar free mm-hmm. options of the stuff. I, th- I think there's more options with the sugar free than there is with the actual yeah. added sugar stuff. So that's not the reason, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, to to avoid these because you can't get the sugar free. And then the, the next argument would be, yeah, but all the sucralose and yeah, aspartame, those artificial sweeteners. Yeah. Talk about those. Yeah, the the artificial sweetener <laughs> debate. Um, we exchanged a message uh, yesterday about the, the seed oils debate. I feel like this is maybe not as uh, right. <laughs> not as lively a debate, but yeah, the idea that this was something that I heard from a client uh, recently who was um, someone who enjoys their beverages. And it was suggested not by me, but by her trainer, by her coach um, on the fitness end that she consumed some type of electrolytes, you know, mm-hmm. to maybe mitigate some of the effects of uh, how much she enjoys alcohol. And she got some liquid IV, which, you know, is very synonymous. Yeah, electrolytes, liquid mm-hmm. IV. Um, the original liquid IV version has a bunch of sugar in it. It, it was suggested, well, try the non-sugar version. Mm-hmm. Her response was, well, those artificial sweeteners are just as bad for you <laughs> as as the sugar. I love this conversation. Which um, has there is no definitive evidence that that is the case. Right. Um, when people replace, you know, a regular soda with diet soda, they lose weight. Why? Because the non-nutritive sweeteners don't have any calories right. in them. The The issue with the sugar consumption, yes, we could talk about blood sugar issues, but it's an excess of calories that you are intaking. And that is where a lot of the, the issues arise from. So the yeah, this whole thought process that, oh, well, the artificial sweeteners is just, they're just as bad as the added sugars. Says who? Yeah, there really isn't any empirical evidence that says that at all. There's a lot of people that are trying to draw Mm -hmm. lines there. And there may very well be, like going back to the seed oil thing, like Mm -hmm. it kind of, when you think about it, it doesn't make a lot of good, very much sense to be taking on a bunch of you know, maybe, you know, very processed seed oils. Highly industrially processed, yeah. In that, general, probably bad practice. Probably bad practice. Yeah. And, and, and on that alone, I'm going to reduce my intake. Like, yeah. in, Or at in, least be mindful of it. Be, be very mindful of it. Yeah. Same on the same on the, on the uh, non-nutritive sweetener type stuff. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it would make good sense that, you know, I don't want to take on board too many artificial things and put them in my, my yeah, system. Just generally speaking, yeah. But the studies that we've seen done where, you know, 
again, we did one on the erythritol, you know, that came out, uh, God, <laughs> you know, and, and that, and that study and how misrepresented it was and how yeah. it was giving people heart attacks, you know, and, and, and heart disease. Yeah. Well, that was, was a major leap. It was <laughs> yeah. wild. It was yeah. wild. So yeah, that, that isn't really a, I, I don't think a thing to be, to be turning your nose down or, or looking down your nose at, at energy drinks and energy drink drinkers uh, <laughs> either. Because I, I think if you went across the board and you looked at a lot of the other things that they're intaking from a food perspective, they're taking on a lot of artificial additives and a lot of other foods. So look, I mean, you do you, you, you onboard energy drinks or not, but mm -hmm. that's not a, that's not really a good reason to look at this from a health perspective uh, yeah. or, or, or I guess avoid them. Uh, yeah, that, that was another interesting, sort of another interesting point. Yeah, I think that then the question becomes, that, well, you know what, just to be safe, then I'd rather not consume either. I'd rather not consume the sugar, nor do I want to consume the artificial sweeteners. Okay, that's fine. If, if you want to, you know, uh, if you want to cut both of those out entirely, go ahead. But then my argument then becomes, well, what if beyond just caffeine and artificial sweeteners, there are other ingredients in an energy drink Great that point. actually provide you with some legitimate benefits? And I think there's more products on the market now that are providing benefits. This isn't just a carbonated can of sugary caffeine. Like there's more in the, in a well-formulated product than just that. Very good point. Like... Such as, um, I mean, taurine makes a, makes an appearance often. We could, you know, I've, there's some debate. There, I, yeah, yeah. I get some weird, yeah, it's, there's some weird connotation about taurine and I'm really not sure where it comes from because if you look up taurine, taurine is something that is, is cardio protective. There's a form of magnesium called magnesium taurine. It's an amino acid. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's sulfur based <clears throat> amino acid, um, that is naturally present in your body. It has a, a number of different uh, uh, roles in your body, really too many to list. I looked them up before we started Just recording sure. and yeah. there was a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't really understand where the negative connotation from that comes from, but some other ingredients that are starting to show up are things like alpha GPC is starting to make its way into energy drinks, something called uh, Cognizant, which is a, a trademarked or patented form of acetylcholine, things like uh, neurofactor. You talked about, um, we talked about like naturally derived caffeine mm -hmm. and other potential- um, Polyphenols. Uh, yeah, yeah. Other, uh, other potential beneficial compounds within mm -hmm. uh, coffee beans. And neurofactor is again, a trademarked ingredient that has been shown to increase BDNF. So it helps with neurogenesis, the production of new brain cells. So that's something that is in my personal energy drink of choice, Ghost Energy. Shout out to Ghost. Maybe send me some stuff. Uh, <laughs> well played. <laughs> you owe me. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, carnitine um, in that same, in, uh, in yep. Ghost Energy, carnitine tartrate, which can have <clears throat> cognitive benefits, which could have benefits for your metabolism. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, ginseng is starting to make its way into some energy drinks, which, you know, some people react differently to ginseng, but ginseng can have a lot of benefits. Well, so. We covered that one in depth at one point yeah, on the show. Yeah, yeah, that was that was like one of my first episodes. Yeah, yeah it, indeed the, it was. Yeah, the uh, uh, adaptogen episodes. Um, so the, the point being is you may be getting benefits beyond the benefits of caffeine. And in my opinion, that often outweighs any potential downsides of eh, maybe I'm drinking too much sucralose. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I, again, you, you, you mentioned a bunch of stuff in there. I, it's the, every, every company is doing something a little bit different. Uh, it's certainly evolved. I think in terms of the quality of the ingredients is something that we should probably mention too. I mean, the competition, the level of competition within the energy drink market is massive, right? Yeah. It seems like everybody's coming out with one, oh, but yeah. who's really, who, who hangs around, right? And, mm -hmm. and what are the, <clears throat> what's the skin in the game for those that hang, hang around? Well, Obviously, there's a lot of revenue there, but there's a lot on the line from a reputation perspective and chintzing on what you're putting in there or uh, let's just say hanging yourself out to dry by, you know, saying there's ingredients in there that aren't or levels that mm -hmm. aren't or or whatever is not a good practice, particularly mm -hmm. in these, this day and age. Like yeah. going back to Joel Cola, like any publicity is good publicity. Now, mm -hmm. not so much anymore, yeah. you know, like because you, you, you can get roasted real fast and we've seen companies you know, go woke, go broke, all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. real fast in a real, in a, in a really quick way. And, um, or in a, in a, in a 
very impressive way, I might mm-hmm. add, in, in in some cases. So yeah, I don't think you know people should be should be worried. Well, you know, this company is being shady or whatever else. Yes, there are shady companies out there, but mm-hmm. for the most part, the big ones out there that you see, the mainstream ones, they're 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 holding their stuff together. I think pretty good. No, yeah, and a, a perfect case in point in terms of the market knows uh, is Bang, which Bang became the you know the biggest energy drink, most popular energy drink, I think outside of Red Bull and Monster. If you look at the data, Red Bull still outsells everyone by a long shot. Globally, um, yeah. But, you know, Bang became this huge brand and then it came out, huh, maybe there's not any CoQ10 and creatine in they there. Shit the which, bed. Yeah, which if you really thought there was CoQ10 and a significant amount of creatine in Bangs, you should um, reevaluate your... Um, ability to read labels. Right. But, um, but anyways, yeah, now bang has really fallen far behind brands like ghost and C4 and Celsius and prime energy, like all these other kind of secondary brands that are leading with higher quality ingredients than Red Bull or monster, which are kind of, you know, the big box or mass market products. Um, they've all surpassed bang and you don't, you don't hear about bang too much anymore because they were you know, they had some shady practices that got exposed and the market devoured them, basically. <laughs> exactly. Again, not very they're, forgiving. They're, they're competitors the, devoured the, them. The, the court yeah. of public opinion is not very kind yeah. uh, and they're right every time, right? Yeah. And then obviously- Market knows, yeah. It, the market knows and obviously your your competitors will figure out a way to exploit the hell out of that and mm-hmm. uh, make themselves look better. Mm-hmm. And it won't take long for the retailers to figure that out and go, well, that shit ain't selling. Yeah, so we're gonna put we're yeah. gonna put on the shelf what does sell. So, yeah, right? and there is I think there is you know a, a perfect case in point is Prime. Prime is that oh that God, whole yeah. brand is just it's a marketing machine, and their um you know the actual product itself, in my opinion, is no more special than any other one. Alani New is another brand yep. that is yep. more or less a marketing machine for a product that, in my opinion, is um, just not, okay, not extraordinary, just okay, yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, it's a very dog eat dog space where yeah, that negative PR can can bury you when you have you know the power of mega influencers like a brand like Alani New or Prime has. Yeah, interesting. I, I, I so when we we kind of break this all out, like I, I don't want people to think that we're going like everybody should be drinking energy drinks. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a case for drinking caffeine. Right. And if you're going to consume your caffeine, be thinking about how you're doing it. Going back to the sugar and the additional additives. Oh, I would never drink those, says the person that goes to Starbucks every single day and spends $14.32 on a cup full of sugar and, and additives yeah, and artificial a milkshake with caffeine in it. Yeah. More or less with a little <laughs> bit of coffee, maybe at the bottom or some, something that got pumped out of some, you know, plastic, you know, yeah. uh, container somewhere again, like let's, let's, think about this for a second. So again, like nobody's, nobody's pointing any fingers or look, looking down their nose at those people. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You, you walk into your office or your boardroom or whatever, you're carrying your 780 yeah. calorie. <laughs> yeah. Ca- ca- yeah. Caffeine milkshake. Nobody is, you know, looking sideways at that. But if you were to walk into that same room, carrying a monster, people, but what was you in high school or something like <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't care, dude. I, I honestly, yeah, I, I love that. But that's a really good point. Like, you know, who's walking into the boardroom with a with a Monster Energy drink versus nobody? Yeah, I mean, know. in our in our space, in the health and fitness space, obviously, it's yeah, energy drinks. We're all caffeine addicted, energy drinking, right. you know, people. But that's probably but you, part of the problem. Yeah, <laughs> we're, they, they don't want to be looked at as one of those guys. Yeah, those bros. Yeah, th- I think it is very energy drinks. Are, oh, you're like some kind of like bro who's going to go get in his four by four and, you know, go Froden, you know, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. I just have my, I just have my coffee. <laughs> I'm, I'm a civilized person. Uh, it is, it is quite interesting. So just kind of wrapping this up, let's talk strategy here. Like, so if you're going to, so drinking, making a case for energy drinks here, uh, if we're going to, if we're going to be drinking these things, we're going to be drinking them regularly. Okay. Right. How are we going to do that? Or how might you do that? Or how might you, you take a look at how to make this work for you best, minimize side effects, unwanted, let's say side effects, uh, make better choices, uh, to help performance and get the benefits from the caffeine outside of God, the drinks are just delicious. Let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's something for everybody out there. I mean, the, 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 these guys really, these companies really have nailed that. I mean, I have my favorites, right? Like yeah. every single time. And it's interesting, like how far, how, 
far in people will go on a particular brand or a particular flavor. Like when mm-hmm. it comes out, like it gets posted on oh, Instagram yeah. and whatever else. And they're just trying to, they're just trying to bring you over to their cult. Like this is, oh, yeah. this is the way we found the new one. Oh, yeah. But it does it all the time. They come out with like a special flavor and I'm like, Ooh, the can looks nice. I want that. Yeah, It's like <laughs> shoes. But, yeah. I'm literally like, I'm wooed by it's the exact same drink, but the can is pretty. And I, so I'm like, Oh, I want that. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> uh, so going back, like, so if we're going to do these things, I talked about like when to maybe do this, we talked about like morning, uh, and you know, things to be aware of if you are already having issues, uh, with maybe again, a, a down regulation or a, uh, let's just say a dysfunction, like a hormonal balance that's keeping you from getting your morning started and getting your day ended, you know, productively, let's, let's kind of generalize it. Like with your circadian rhythms, that being, you know, you're, you're not getting that cortisol hit in the morning, which is picking you up and getting you ready for the day. And you're feeling like, I just can't even function without this. You may need to look a little deeper into this and not use the caffeine as a crutch, but maybe, maybe it is a band aid for, for a certain period of time. And we talk about that shit on the show all the time. Like yeah. how, what, what, what could be going on there that's causing this? Cause that's a symptom of a greater problem. Mm-hmm. That is not the root cause, yeah. right? There's something else going on there. And it's 99% of the time, it's lifestyle. Yeah, your, your caffeine dependence was probably not caused by caffeine. Your caffeine dependence is probably caused by other, other lifestyle factors. And if you're in that situation, then yes, you know, caffeine can have some compounding negative effects. Um, but that needs to begin with, you know, yeah, how are you eating? How are you sleeping? The same stuff we talk about all the time. But when it comes to, okay, responsible use, not using yep. caffeine as a crutch or using energy drinks as a crutch. My my first suggestion would be understand your caffeine tolerance and get an actual perspective on what, you know, say on how 200 milligrams of caffeine, how that affects you. If you're somebody where you're like, I had 200 milligrams of caffeine and I felt absolutely wired to the point that I was uncomfortable, then you probably have some sensitivity to caffeine. Or if you're somebody who had 400 milligrams of caffeine and you're like, I don't feel a damn thing, then maybe you've been drinking too much caffeine more than likely, or you just have some crazy tolerance to caffeine naturally, which is possible, but is unlikely. So first understand, get a perspective on caffeine dosing so that you know how much is appropriate for you. Yeah. I think there's a couple of bewares here. Again, I kind of mentioned like the shift worker and how they're managing their shift based on weird hours and things like that to, to stay alert. I mean, we mentioned like the, maybe the firefighter or the, the law enforcement officer who is hitting these things deep into their, you know, their Mm -hmm. 10 or 12 hour shift and how that's going to impact you later when you should be coming down. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I get it. You still got two hours of your shift left. That's a thing, right? You know, you want to still, you can't just start, Oh, I'm, I'm punching out now. No, you got two hours. If you, if I make the call and you have to come to my house, mm-hmm. um, I, I want you alert. Yeah. So, uh, but at the same time, be thinking about how you're managing that and why do you need this? Could mm-hmm. you be doing a better job on the nutrition side of things in order to manage these energy quote unquote highs and lows? Mm-hmm. There are other products or natural derived substances that you could be onboarding to help you with this from like a nootropic or a, um, uh, um, what am I thinking of Steven? <laughs> Nootropic, yeah, the, or, yeah, the or nootropic cognitive, stuff, yeah, cognitive yeah, enhancing, yeah, 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 the like, cognitive like, enhancing yeah. stuff, but more, more specifically, nootropics that could help mm-hmm. you kind of stay on top of things a little bit more, a little bit more, sh- a little bit sharper or clearer, yeah. sort of yeah. in the head. And I think just to interject there, I think that's the the benefit of some of these, you know, we could call them higher end energy drinks that are coming out, is you can get that sim that similar clarity and alertness and stimulated feeling with less caffeine. You don't have to, you know, for example, I I could have 400 milligrams of just straight caffeine, or I could have 200 milligrams of caffeine with some additional nootropic components and feel the same amount of alert and quote unquote stimulated as I would with the potentially excessive caffeine uh, dose. Yeah. If you don't believe that, go back and listen to the, uh, we have two episodes and these are, these are different. This is the word I was painfully searching for. There's one on adaptogens okay. <laughs> and then there's one on nootropics. Mm-hmm. Um, get into that and, and listen to the things that we talk about there, because if you haven't gotten into a good nootropic prop, uh, product before, 
Mm. I'm telling you, they are game changers. Yeah. It, you, it, you can feel what you're looking for from the energy drink or the caffeine without the caffeine. Exactly. I mean, there's even mushroom coffees going back to nootropics mm -hmm. and the yeah, yeah. yeah. and adaptogens. The, yeah. The it, mushrooms kind of fall in both categories. Yeah. So, you know, that have very low caffeine, but have all the cognitive benefits that you may get from caffeine at the same time, but in a better way. For a lot of reasons, go and listen to those episodes. They're not We'd, blocking those adenosine receptors. They're not tricking your body into thinking you're less tired than you are. And you're not going to like adapt to that in a way or, or, or develop some type of resistance to that in a way. In fact, there could be compounding effects over time. Actually, benefits, benefits. Yeah, versus yeah, uh, dependence or tolerance forming. Yeah. So uh, again, there's a there's a something to to look out for, or something to maybe strategize around. The other thing, I, you know, for for folks that are working out constantly and are using pre workout and you know, or maybe at or over their, let's just say safe level of caffeine consumption for the day. This is something to keep in mind. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so when we start looking at some of these pre-workouts, dude. Yeah. Some of them are, yeah. Some of them are pretty, uh, pretty high. I mean, I remember a particular guy who was stim head, um, not in an illicit fashion, not that I was aware of, but, um, he would always want the very like, highest level caffeine, 400 to 500 milligrams Insane. per scoop. And then would also have an energy drink on top of that. Wow. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we're pushing 700, 800 milligrams, now we, we may be getting into some uh, deleterious <laughs> territory. Right. So yeah, uh, it goes back to understanding like how much caffeine is in your pre-workout. And nowadays there may be, you know, you have to look a little closer for caffeine from total sources yep. because there may be the standard caffeine and hydrous for 200 milligrams or whatever. And then it has something else called like, there's something called Infinergy or uh, di-caffeine malate. That's like an extended release caffeine. So you're actually getting, you know, maybe 300, 350 uh, total milligrams of caffeine, but you looked over that part <laughs> in the label. And, oh, it's 200 caffeine. That's, that's fine. I'm going to slam another energy drink. And then you were out you're, you know, over the moon. Or I'll have another yeah. half a scoop or something like that. I mean, people yeah. listen to this would be chuckling about it. I chuckle about this with my friends. I do not use a pre-workout. I haven't in years. They, um, there's been, I've been, there's been times where I've been consistent, but most of my times, no. Mm -hmm. Most of the time that I ever spent working out. There was a time, mm -hmm. right, when I was very young and, and getting into this where pre-workout was a little bit different than it is now. Um, there's Who a product out there called yeah. Ultimate Orange, which I think literally had methamphetamine in it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. They, they were, uh, when I was just starting in the supplement industry, they were uh, they were starting <laughs> to ban that. Yeah, They were getting in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was some old, uh, yeah, one of the first stores I worked at. What was it called? I don't know if it was Ultimate Orange, something orange, but... But yeah, it was well, they had changed the name of it to get away from the problems <laughs> that they were the already suffering, or whatever. Yeah, but even then, still, it was we were taking nodos and and uh, aspirin, right? Yeah. Pre pre workout. That was the pre workout. A cup of coffee with no dose and an, and an aspirin. Mm -hmm. And so we were already we were figuring out our own pre workouts back then when yeah. when Ultimate Orange was like the only. Yeah. Was, was the alternative outside of what I just said and cocaine and methamphetamine, which I didn't get into, but um, not on purpose anyways. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it was there when I got there. Yeah. So things to think about as you're, as you're, as you're, you're, you're stacking supplements and you're looking at like onboarding caffeine at the same time. I just want to go back to that, that pre-workout thing again, yeah. chuckling about it, but you need to have some awareness. Let's not be an asshole. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, how much stim do you really need? What are you getting out of that? Um, yeah. And again, if there's some level of dependence on that, I'd be thinking, I'd yeah, be there, thinking about is, that a little bit. There is a point of diminishing returns, I think. And there is, there is a little bit of kind of uh, chasing the dragon that can begin if, especially with pre-workouts or energy drinks. I actually, I ran into this with a client the other day who had just discovered Celsius and she was like, oh, these make me feel great. I don't have a crash. I have so much energy. I feel awesome. Um, you know, it's that like, you know, it feels like the first time. The honeymoon you know? effect. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I'm like, oh yeah, you'll feel over the moon, you know, until you, until you start building some tolerance for it. And then it's not going to hit the same anymore. Um, but yeah, that you, you chase that initial euphoria from like oh, the new pre-workout or the new energy drink. And there's a point of diminishing returns where you're just, you're seeking something you're not going to get. You're chasing uh, something that is fleeting. So I guess at the end of the day, if you have a uh, severe addiction to energy drinks, maybe take a look at that, maybe back up. But yeah. in what's an addiction? Dude, if you're pounding three, four of these things a day, that's 
I'm going to say you probably got a problem, but um, and why are <laughs> you're, you? You're chasing that dragon. <laughs> yeah, probably. If you're chasing it for the ca- the effects of the caffeine and the alertness mm-hmm. and the things that come along with that, I mean, you could easily swap and that dopamine out. Dopamine stimulation, yeah. Yeah, if what you like is a, um, you know, a fizzy drink with a little flavor to it, you know, carbonation mm-hmm. and you know, ice cold coming out of the freezer, who doesn't like that? That shit's refreshing as hell. That's why, yeah. I, I mean, it's, uh, there's nothing better than a hot, you know, uh, coming off the range after a hot day, walking over to the refrigerator and pulling that ice cold thing out and, and pounding yeah. 20 ounces of, you know, unadulterated monster, <laughs> right? Sugar-free monster. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, it does. <laughs> Every single time. So much that I'm I'm happy to crack the next one. And mm-hmm. But uh, my, my, my point of that is, is like th- things to think about. But at the same time, energy drinks are not the devil. Yeah. And uh, again, I think the the, the, the key takeaway here is to drink responsibly. Uh, you know, you don't have to feel bad about it. It doesn't mean, you know, your, your, your uh, moral integrity is, is being frayed. Yeah. You're not some kind of junkie because you drink energy drinks instead of coffee. Yeah. Depending, you know, you could drink too much coffee. You could drink too much energy drinks. Yeah. So go out, have your energy drinks, uh, enjoy them, drink responsibly.